three tutorial for brushes. Uh, brushes are a great uh, addition to Aperture 3. They allow a lot more flexibility and uh, also allows you to edit the photos more easier. So I've got a couple of examples here, a couple of landscape shots and a normal kind of picture just to show you the differences. If I open up this landscape shot, I'll just go in, I'll show you how you can access it from the main aperture window. Down here you've got your, obviously you've got your rotate, your metadata adjustments, uh, stamp, the picture leveller, uh, the crop tool, red eye, and then the new addition down here is brushes. If you just click anywhere on there, you get a list of brushes. You can retouch, you can skin smooth, you can lighten, you can darken, you can multiply, you can overlay, you can add tint, contrast, saturation, definition, vibrancy, blur or sharpen. Also another way to access this is if you go into full screen mode by pressing F, as you can see you get a, a bigger view of the picture and if you press H that brings up your HUD obviously you don't really need your HUD at the minute. Well, you can access the brushes from the HUD as well. You can uh, for the con colour, you can brush in the colour. But at the minute, I'm not going to be showing you that, so let's put the HUD away. And once you're in full screen mode, at the top, you get the drop down menu, which hides when you're just looking at the picture. And the brushes are here next to red eye removal again. So for this one, I think I'd really want to lighten up the sky. So going to brushes, I want to dodge, lighten, and as you can see, it comes up. You get the little uh, selection box down here. You can change the brush size, the softness, the strength, and you can click or unclick a box to detect the edges. So on here, I put the brush quite big because the area is quite big, and I don't need to be that. Uh, I don't need to take that much care at the top. I can also always change the size of the brush once I get nearer to the more detail. So up here, I'll just start brushing as you can see, it's making a drastic difference to the sky. It's making it a lot lighter, giving it a true to life feeling. As you can see there, I'll brush, just brush this in. Also this is very uh, helpful if you use a tablet, a graphics tablet, which I currently don't, but I'm looking for one in the out in the market for one so if you've got any recommendations please put them below so it'd be very easy to brush in as you can see I've put detect edges on so it doesn't go over the edge I'm just going to change the brush size down a bit so we can get a bit more detail around the top of these trees as you can see it's very simple to do and it doesn't look over the top it's just you don't have to do all easy, you can just do parts, but for the purpose of this video I'm just going to be showing you obviously the uh, other good points about it. As you can see there, just do the last couple of bits. As you can see I've done that there. Yeah, it's not perfect, but this is just for the video's sake. And say I wanted to now done a bit which I did, didn't want to, you think oh god you can either escape from full screen mode, you can go to edit and you can undo or once you're in this you can click the erase button and as you can see here I'll just do a line over there and you can see it takes it straight back off no problems whatsoever. So with this you can also darken so I'll do it over these trees so you can see it gives it a nice effect. You can, again, you can change the softness, the strength. You can see it's ideal. And it gives your photos a very nice touch so you can do selective editing. What I also like about these brushes is it's not just for darkening and lightening. You can also add vibrancy. So to the water down here, I'll add some vibrancy. There and 
it's just superb that you can add all different things on. You can intensify, you can change the contrast, the saturation. So yeah, you get my idea on that picture. Again, this is a different landscape shot I took this time. As you can see, the sky is a bit nicer now, so you could you could not do as much. You could just put the softness right down and the brush size. And uh, you can uh, you could just do parts of the sky if you wanted. You can see there. You just change parts. And then here might be a bit of a better example to show you the definition and contrast. So for the contrast, I'll shut the brush up. As you can see there, that's a real nice contrasty feel. Obviously you won't want to be doing this for all your pictures, for them pictures that you really need to post process, they're ideal. As you can see there it's added a lot of vibrancy to the water and to the whole picture itself. So yeah, that's vibrancy. Now to show you in a different example, I've got this picture of this uh, this nice tree that I liked, so here I'm just going to add some definition to this tree. Drop down the brush size again. I want it to detect the edge. I want it to detect the edge because obviously because I'm only going to paint in the tree. As you can see, I started in a bit of definition. One thing to know, I hope Aperture uh, do update this when you bring out 3.0.3. Sometimes when you do brush, brush in, it can use a lot of CPU cycles, so try not to do too much at once without it slowing down. So you can see here I'm brushing it in, it's giving the tree more definition. And again, I can show you an example with saturation here. As you can see there. It's a really great addition for simply editing your photos. So yeah, that's Aperture 3 brushes. There's any more tutorials that you'd like me to do, just uh, post in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I hope this helps you out in your Aperture endeavours. Bye.